What's up guys, I'm Dimitri with Howard Canucks and since 2010 I've been building computers and it's been exciting 7 years in the making, I've had to learn as I go and uh, you can check out multiple tutorials online on some of the tips and techniques for building a PC but here are my main tips that I'd like to share with you, something that I wish I knew back then and Fred knows what's up. Let's talk about all that right after this. Cooler Master Master Keys keyboard lineup is now available in three sizes to fit within your space with large, medium and small boards with either beautiful RGB or pure white LED illumination. A little something for everyone. Make it yours with the Master Keys Pro by Cooler Master. All right, so let's begin with the gear. A magnetic screwdriver, get it. You won't regret it. There are plenty affordable kits that you can buy online through Amazon and through other means. It's not gonna be harmful if you're a sane person and handling your components with respect. It will save you some nerves from trying to, you know, find that little screw that has fallen in the little crack of the black hole that is some crevice inside your case or underneath the motherboard. Magnetic screwdriver is a must. The best way to organize your screws is to use something like this. Uh, little compartments to organize your thumb screws, your drive screws, your motherboard screws. Very handy. I know everyone wants to peel off the protective film off the acrylic side panels. I know the sound is really something. But don't. Keep that on until you're finished with the build to prevent unnecessary scratches and potentially ruining your day of finding giant little scratches everywhere after your assembly if you're not careful. And if you own a tempered glass case, still keep the protective film on, not to prevent scratches but to prevent finger marks so that you can peel that thing in the end and it will look shiny and beautiful. Something I do with every single new case that comes into the studio is to loosen up all the thumb screws that I know I will uh, remove eventually because they're tightened way too hard out of the factory and it just helps with the assembly process. Static discharge is a big deal. Make sure to ground yourself either with like one of those grounding straps or touch the metal of the case before handling your components to avoid any uh, unintentional damage to your hardware. Remember that placing the CPU inside the CPU socket does not require any force both on Intel and AMD platforms. So double check to make sure that triangle alignment is correct and you'll be good. An easy way to remember which memory slots to occupy if you're not occupying all of them, say you're using two out of four or four out of eight, is to uh, occupy the non-black dims first or refer to your uh, instructions manual for clarification. A common practice for new builds is to actually assemble everything outside of the case, uh, load into the BIOS and make sure that all the hardware is recognized. If you also want to install Windows, that's also good to do before inserting everything inside the case to avoid any trouble troubleshooting headaches. Another common practice is to visualize your build and how things will be structured inside the case, potentially might highlight some of those red flags for compatibility. A few things to keep in mind is not all cases have 140 millimeter fan support at the rear. And if you're installing radiator and fans at the top for most mid towers, you might run into compatibility issues with high dim for the memory. Uh, and most ITX motherboards have only two fan headers. So keep that in mind for smaller builds and the airflow direction and it's totally okay to use a non-modular power supply. For fan installation I recommend rubber fan screws. Uh, there are multiple variations of them and they have benefits like easier installation and also anti-vibration properties and I just don't like to deal with those annoying stock fan screws. So yeah, rubber fan screws. For cable management, I would pre-wire the 8-pin cable and your I.O. cables, usually because the 8-pin is in kind of an awkward corner spot and having that cable out there before inserting the motherboard, uh, I find it easier. Plus, pre-wiring the I.O. cables first before handling your power supply cables just makes it much easier cable management job. And my main cable measurement tip would be to route and assemble cables by areas and only then secure. Allows you to visualize how cables are sort of spread out through the back and then allows you to bunch up certain cables in those areas so cable management becomes easier. Remember that the standard SATA cable has four connections and they're all spaced out perfectly to allow for four drives to be connected simultaneously if they are located one above another. Uh, so concentrate your drives in that one area in order to avoid adding more SATA cables. Double check all your mounting points, even the slight screw fixation that isn't aligned properly might uh, cause your system to short out and cause some other issues. So use the IO shield and double check that the motherboard standoff, the extended one that usually 
usually catch as the motherboard is uh, aligned properly in the hole to avoid any shortings due to improper mounting. If you are using an all-in-one cooler, double check how you want the radiator to be mounted inside the case and rotate the radiator accordingly for the CPU block to remain horizontal on orientation. Otherwise, uh, you might have the block that's like skewed and the logo on the middle might not align properly and won't give you the best visuals. Remember that hot air rises, so set your fans accordingly, perhaps maybe rotating the CPU heatsink to exhaust air upwards, uh, but remember it's totally okay to also have horizontal air direction. It's time to take illumination seriously with Vengeance RGB DDR4 memory by Corsair. With incredibly bright LEDs and uniform color spread, add a touch of classic color that is fully software controllable and compatible with a wide variety of Intel and AMD platforms. More info in the description below. So I think that's pretty much it for my side. Share your own hidden gems for PC building. And remember, when in doubt, check out the Hierarchnux forums for more tips and stuff. And we have such an awesome community. I would love to hear what you guys say. Make sure to subscribe for more similar content and we'll see you in the next video.